All right, guys, so I'm doing this citrus avocado mango uh, foyer spray with some more extra iron, and I'm using this new Ryobi electrostatic uh, sprayer, which is supposed to help the material cling to whatever surfaces that you're spraying onto. So like the leaves are, you know, it's supposed to stick on there, I guess. We'll give it a try, give you guys an update to see how it does. So this thing has three different nozzles. There's a 50, 75, and 100 micron nozzle. So you can actually adjust that. And then there's also a prime where you can prime the nozzle. Here's your adjustment right here to change the, between the different types. Um, I like either spray number two or spray number three, which is the 75 or a hundred micron nozzle and it just seems to kind of come out really nicely um, the 50 is small and it sticks really well also um, and it's kind of a misting effect so it actually kind of blows the, the stuff away a little bit but I think the 50 would work also and it's not too loud you can see this is a 75 micron Okay, so this is this is the 50. You can see it kind of coming out more misty. And this is the biggest one. Bigger droplets. It's not bad. So the main reason why I bought this little sprayer was because if you can see this is my forte and my forte has a lot of yellow leaves right now so I think it's just missing like an iron so it's iron deficiency of some sort so the last time my Kona had this issue I just sprayed it with this um, chelated uh, iron and it actually helped out quite a bit so um, that's what we're doing today also just to see what happens so um, today is the 27th so, actually no it's the 28th of November so in a couple weeks I'll come back here and videotape this uh, forte again to see how it does based off of using this and then doing the foyer spray to help with the, the yellowing of the leaves here so let's see how it goes guys so a couple of weekends ago, I actually went down to San Diego with the family and we drove down the 15 freeway and of course, when you're driving down the freeway through Vista, there's tons of avocados. Check it out, you guys. It's actually all over the hillside and what's interesting is that it's really steep and it's amazing that these guys are actually growing pretty well out here. So I'm worried about these raccoons, but but at least we don't have one of these in our backyard. Wait for it, wait for it. Also, with all of our hard work kind of getting our hands dirty, it's good to get your hands clean by these really nice fish that are kind of going around just cleaning everybody's hands. So my plan was actually on the way back hopefully be able to get back early enough so I can actually pick up some avocados at a fruit stand um, off the 15 freeway but that did not happen so it's all good uh, maybe next time so this is why we're growing our own avocados as you can see I got this from 
grocery store and it was nasty. It had like weird stuff on it. From the outside, you couldn't even tell if it looked bad. It just looked all right. And then once you cut open to it, it's like, yuck. So one day we're gonna have so many avocados that we're not gonna have to buy any more. Well, that's the plan at least because we are looking like we will have a year round harvest based on all of the different varieties that I have right now. Also, what's up with this uh, double sticker now? I don't know, that's not a good idea, I don't think. So if you guys watched my video from last week, you know that we went to a local farmer's market kind of fruit stand, which was on Van Buren Boulevard, which is in Riverside, California. And I will link their address down below. So if you guys are interested in dropping by and checking it out, but we are finally cutting it open in to our bacon avocado, which as you can see, the seed is actually kind of on the bigger side, but overall the flesh and the color um, looks really, really cool. It's kind of a lighter um, pale yellow um, and then the edges where the, le the, the actual skin is, it's a little darker green. Um, so my plan is to make some guacamole. I'm going to cut both of them so you can actually see. Um, now it cuts easy because the, the flesh is pretty, I mean, these are ripe. These are ready to go. That's what makes it easy to kind of cut into. Um, so seed wise, it's on the large size side of things, which is actually, um, not that big of a deal. Um, overall you got a lot of flesh and here I am just trying to peel the skin just so you can see if, how it peels and it does not peel at all <laughs> it sucks it's actually um very very thin skin um and you know as we kind of uh pull the seed out in my mind i'm thinking this is probably a good idea to save the seed because it's such a big seed that there's probably a lot of stored energy in there so having a big seed like this will actually produce probably good sized um, seedlings which we can actually use to kind of graft some different avocado varieties onto so that's the plan um, so grab the bowl I'm gonna start scooping this out so we can actually make some guacamole and one thing you'll notice is when I'm scooping it out I'm trying to be extra gentle especially when I get closer to where the skins at um, if you use a spoon and you try to be gentle you can get it where you're actually not cutting into the skin but as you can see when I'm doing it if I'm in a rush sometimes it will kind of cut into the skin and break through which is a little tougher to manage but overall not that big of a deal um, now the flesh by the skin is actually really really tasty so I'm trying to get as much of it as possible but as you can see it, it it's a flimsy kind of really thin thin skin so that's what you're gonna get with bacon avocados um, you know I have one bacon avocado tree and you know I planted it in you know the end of 2019 it grew nicely in 2020 and the spring of 2021 it actually flowered and had a lot of fruit um, we had some fruit drop throughout the year. I'm down to only two avocados left. So when I saw these avocados at a fruit stand, I was excited to give it a try because, you know, this is kind of a, a chance to try bacon avocados, knowing that I have a bacon avocado tree and knowing that, you know, um, using this as kind of like a guide of what my bacon will eventually uh, taste like also but one thing I'm trying to do is um, kind of keep my bacon on the tree as long as possible so right now since they're still on the tree and hanging on it's probably a good thing that that they haven't fallen off yet but I am concerned that they, we have some you know UFOs that might go eat our uh, bacon especially after we spent the whole year really babying and ensuring that we still have fruit available for us. So my plan right now is maybe December and January, pick one in December and pick one in January. But there's a chance that if 
if they do kind of hold on which they are doing right now maybe i'll pick one in january and then pick one in february so if i do that then you know i get a chance to taste it after it's been on the tree even longer to see if it's even better because what happens with avocados as you guys know if you pick it a little early it doesn't um have all of the oils developed yet so you want to pick it as late as possible if you can so here i am with the, the guacamole very simple guacamole and trying it with this flimsy chip which <laughs> um kind of broke but overall the flavor was really really good nice and creamy um, not a strong avocado flavor but good nonetheless so if you made it this far thanks for being a part of the the team and hit the subscribe hit the like button do all of the things that you got to do to be a part of this journey and remember you always got to stay hydrated and make sure your avocados are hydrated also all right see ya